and out for a run, we typically aren't preparing for the worst. <laughs> this was an attack I knew would be coming, but it felt extremely real. I thought I put up a good fight, screaming, kicking, and attempts to roll away. You bucking your hips was perfect. You facing uh, your, your assailant was perfect. You're trying to fight him. You don't want to turn around and, and give your back. Once you, you're face down, uh, he has control over you. Even though I did some things right, it wasn't enough to get away. It's frustrating. You think about it over and over, like what would you do in the moment? And when it all happens, your adrenaline is running so, so fast. And if you're out running, you're already out of breath a little bit. So. Um, it was tough. So what did I do wrong? In running and having earbuds in, you, you're, you have no uh, environmental awareness. Robert Kosky owns Krav Maga of Southern Colorado. He has over two decades of law enforcement training and martial arts experience. In addition to ditching the headphones, Robert says you have to learn how to control panic and react fast, something that's easier said than done. So training your mind comes with training your body. So there's a direct mind and body connection. In addition to practice, carrying something that can be used as a weapon may be key. I can strike into the face, into the throat. It's, it's once again, it's a force multiplier because I'm taking what I, that same impact area and I'm shrinking it down to that little quarter of an inch diameter impact area. After learning some moves, I hit the trail again, this time without headphones and discreet weapons in hand. For the second attack, I had a handheld alarm that caught my assailant off guard. Initially, that threw me off. I was thinking, oh, my focus went from you to try and shut that up, hold you down while you were fighting. My grandma gave it to me a couple years ago for Christmas. It's called a Nan Banshee, and you can pull it this way, or there's a flashlight on one side, and then you can also press this little side button. Um, so obviously this is a great deterrent for people around. Hopefully someone else is on the trail biking with their dog on a run or, you know, or their neighbors walking around grabbing their mail. So this would at least bring attention and you combine it with this and you've got yourself an actual weapon. After that, you used the Cubiton and I could feel every one of your strikes. And there was one time you got me a little bit and I could feel the nerves in my hand kind of give up and then Right as you got away, you hit me in the top of the thigh, just above the knee. As soon as you did that, I couldn't get up to grab you. It wasn't the most graceful escape, but I sort of got away. The adrenaline of the fight and of getting away, and then I needed to calm my mind down and almost like reignite my legs, because I was literally, obviously, we can see in the video, total, total jello when I ended up getting up, because I was like, oh yes, free. You still got to keep that focus. Even though I overpowered you, I weigh more than you and bigger than you, you still fought the entire time. There are three things Jared and Robert say you need to do to survive. One, scream at first, but then focus on the fighting. Two, don't forget to use your legs. And three, aim for the groin, neck, and eyes. At that point, you can just start throwing punches, elbows, uh, hitting them in the groin, get up, and run. They also say it's important to carry something you can defend yourself with. It can be anything, a walking stick, coubaton, alarm, pepper spray, whatever makes sense for you. But even more paramount than that, you cannot give up. Even if it seems like you won't get away, you have to keep fighting. Inside of each of us is that primal tiger, okay? And when you grab that tiger by its tail, what does that tiger do? It turns and rips that person to shreds. And that's the type of attitude that you have to have.